Hello, everybody. I'm going to try something new, something a little different. I'm going to do a five to seven minute video to talk about a painting that I love that um, I hope uh, will interest you and, and uh, keep you busy in this time when um, we're experiencing so much surreal craziness. <laughs> so the painting that I've chosen today, and I'm going to put it up now on the screen for you, is this painting by Jan Vermeer. And it's called The Artist's Studio. And it was painted in 1665. And it, it is at the Kunsthistorisches Museum in Vienna. And um, just a little bit about Vermeer. He was a very mysterious uh, person. He was actually uh, forgotten completely uh, after he died at the uh, end of the 17th century and only rediscovered it in the 19th century. Um, and of course, everybody loves Vermeer now, but for, for 200 years, he was quite unknown. And I guess if there are three things that we can associate with uh, Vermeer, it's um, the intimate nature of his paintings and the light that we always think about when we think about Vermeer and of course his glorious color. Um, he only produced perhaps 35 to 37 works in his entire life. He, he, he died young, but he was, um, uh, he painted very, very slowly and of course, uh, ground all of his own colors. So all of this, this took uh, quite a long time. Now, I just wanted to, to, to uh, let you know, because it's important uh, to understand some of the metaphors in this painting, is that at the time that Vermeer was, was uh, active, painting was not considered an art. It was considered a craft. And um, uh, just to illustrate that, Vermeer was a member of the Guild of St. Luke. This was a craft guild that painters belonged to and for some time actually served uh, as its uh, president as well. Um, so uh, uh, keep that in mind uh, as I'm talking about this painting. So let's, let's look at the painting um, as a whole. Um, you have here a model in a studio and the artist who is painting her. Now this model is dressed as Cleo. Cleo was the muse of history. And how do we know that she's Cleo? Well, she has some of the attributes of Cleo. She has, let me make it a little bit bigger here. I can show you close up, right? She is wearing laurel wreaths. Right, and that was uh, um, the, one of the attributes of the Muse of History. And laurel wreaths um, uh, are, are talk about fame, uh, and uh, of course, history. You know, this we're we're thinking about history and talking about history because what's happened uh, is is important to us. And also, she's holding a book, and that book is usually thought of as Herodotus or, or one of the other um, important um, Greek or maybe Roman uh, historians. And she's also holding a trumpet. And the trumpet is important because it's, um, it announces great deeds that are done and also could indicate fame as well, the way the laurel wreath does. So there, there's Cleo. She is the model in the studio. And um, Vermeer has given us so many interesting, interesting things in this painting. First, let me call attention to this amazing curtain that here that seems as though it's been pulled back right as if to reveal to us in a very dramatic way the scene that is unfolding and one of the things that the curtain is obscuring here is the light source we know it's coming from somewhere behind this curtain we see the light coming in and it's coming in in such an amazing way and casting light on certain things that are just so interesting look at look at the the curtain you can see how the light is uh has and the shadows have been thrown on this curtain and if you think about it of course all of this is done with paint and it's just done with color, how he's indicated the light. But also you see the light streaming in here. You see it in uh, on the model on her face. It illuminates her face and it illuminates this table here with a lot of different interesting things on the table. One of which is this mask, which um, might uh, actually 
I mean, artists used um, uh, plaster casts and, and masks to paint from, but the way this is laying on the table, it almost looks like a death mask. And I'll, and I'll tell you what, whose death he's celebrating in this, in this picture in a minute, but let's focus on the light. So the light is falling in here. Look at how it's also falling over this, the, the, um, the cloth that's on the table here, you can see the, the light. And also let me make this a little bit big again because I wanna just show you, this is so interesting. Look at, well here again, you see the light coming on the cloth. It's cascading almost like waterfalls, right? It's so interesting. But then look at the, the studs on the chair, the leather that's, um, and look just how he's shown the light bouncing off of those metal studs just by, by little blobs of white paint, it's just, Fabulous, just so interesting. Um, now, let's talk about that chair for a minute. The chair, it, Vermeer puts that chair in the bottom right as, a, a, and he's drawn the curtain and it's almost if to, to say, he's saying to us, the viewer, come in, sit down, have a seat, watch what's unfolding here. Again, heightening the dramatic nature of the painting. But of course, the model and the artist, they don't, they don't see us at all. They don't see the viewer. They go about their business ju just as if they didn't see us at all. So look at what else uh, Vermeer does. He, let's look at the floor. Look at the tiles on the floor. He arranges the tiles so that our eye follows them back. They almost look like, like they could be stepping stones into the the painting. He's inviting us uh, in to look into the painting. And the, the, this uh, group uh, follows here the corner of the table, which follows us right up to the, to the uh, model, which is, of course, what, um, what he is looking, uh, looking at as well. And then um, over here, the artist and the easel, the top of this easel here is pointing right at this map. And I'm going to talk about the map in a minute. But that's very important. And um, uh, the artist here, who is here now, art historians have said that this is actually a self-portrait. And they say this even because, because you can't see his face because of the costume. And we know that, that um, Vermeer had clothes like this. So we're thinking that, um, that th this is why they, they're saying that this is a self-portrait. And if you think about what he's saying in the painting, I think that makes a lot of sense. Anyway, the artist is sitting here. And what's he working on? He's at the very beginning of the work. As you see, there's not much on his canvas. What is he working on? Well, he's working on that laurel wreath. Again, the laurel wreath is symbol of, of fame. Also, uh, laurel wreaths are also symbols of eternity too. So he's, so he's saying that the artist here is, is he's working on that fame and the e eternal nature of fame. And his hand, his hand is in position. Let me, again, I'll make it bigger for you. His hand is in the position just the way her head is, is underneath the laurel wreath. His hand, the artist's hand is creating that fame and that eternal nature, which is very, I think, very, very interesting. So now let's look at the map. Now this is a map of, um, uh, of Holland, of the Netherlands, of, the, uh, of Northern Netherlands before the Treaty of Munster was signed in 1648, which is when um, Holland uh, became separated from Habsburg rule, from the rule of the, uh, from being part of the Holy Roman Empire. They were a completely uh, autonomous region now, the north of, of uh, the Netherlands. And lots of, of people, artisans and, and other creatives and merchants left the south and came to the north because they wanted to partake in, in, in that uh, um, uh, revolutionary um, situation that was in the, the, the north. So that that's what this map is of. It's um, showing the old Holland. It's before 1648. And also notice it's a work of art in itself in his studio. As we know, maps are in a lot of Vermeer's paintings and a lot of other Dutch masters from the Golden Age in their paintings. They did decorate the walls of the homes of, uh, of uh, the middle class in um, in. Uh, the Netherlands, and look at around around the body of the map are all these little scenes of of uh, cities and towns and other places in Holland. It's it's really uh, quite a, a, a beautiful thing in itself. Now let's look at that chandelier here at the top of the painting too, because this is very important as well. At the very top of this chandelier, I don't you know you can't really see it that clearly, 
but what you have is a two-headed eagle. And this is the symbol of the Habsburgs. So why is Vermeer showing us a chandelier with the symbol of the Habsburgs? Well, let me get out of here again so you can see the whole thing. Well, also notice in the chandelier, there are no candles in the chandelier, right? There's no light coming from that chandelier from the Habsburgs, the light is coming from the outside. The light is coming from the new Dutch Republic. So um, really, this is a, it's a political painting too, in a lot of ways, that Vermeer is celebrating the fact that um, his, his uh, country that he loves um, has finally been freed of, of Habsburg rule. Now, the muses were the goddesses of inspiration for the arts and sciences. So perhaps what, um, what he's doing here, what Vermeer is doing here, is he's showing us an artist inspired by this muse of history and therefore confirming the place of painting as an art now. It's been inspired by the muse of history, the inspiration for the arts and sciences. So it's not a craft anymore. It's an art that's been inspired by the muse of history. And it's interesting that an alternative title for this painting, the, it's called the artist studio, but other places list this painting as called the art of painting, the art of painting. So perhaps that's what Vermeer is doing here. Or perhaps, the artist, Vermeer, is not the recipient of the muse's inspiration, but by painting her, he's the agent through which she takes on life and significance. It's only through the artist that history and science and the other things uh, take on uh, their role of significance. We don't know, but it's something to, to think about. Now, interestingly, Vermeer never sold his painting and um, he had to sell all of his paintings because he was not, not wealthy. And as I said, he painted uh, very slowly and did not paint a lot. And his wife was always um, on his back to paint faster and sell more things. They had 11 children, so you can imagine that, that he needed the money, but he never sold his painting. After his death, he had quite a, quite a lot of debt and his wife did sell it. She uh, sold it to a Viennese baron so that she could pay off his debts. Now, during World War II, Hitler confiscated this painting and hung it in his private rooms. And it was discovered in the salt mines in either 1943 or 44, where we know that the, the Nazis hid uh, much of the art that they had confiscated. So that ends my first uh, mini uh, lecture on, on a painting, a painting of significance or uh, in the terms of art history or a painting that I love. I'm going to try to make one of these every day for you. And I'll uh, post it on my Facebook page, my Art Talks Facebook page. And um, I hope you've enjoyed it and that you find this painting by um, Vermeer to be as visually seductive and enticing as I do. So thank you very much for being with me, and I hope that you will come back again. Bye-bye.